Toyota's dramatic new technology, the AC power system, is incorporated on its new 7FB series of electric-powered forklifts. The key to realizing this was the development of Toyota's original large-capacity MOS module. This led to the creation of a power system for electric forklifts featuring a number of distinct advantages, the Toyota AC power system. For this, Toyota had to develop an efficient element capable of generating 800 amperes from a 48 volt forklift battery. If commercially available elements were used, they would have made the AC controller so large that its size would have made it totally impractical. Toyota then set about developing the high-performance MOS module to achieve that huge capacity. This in turn enabled Toyota to create an AC controller that is approximately half the size of one that would have been created using a commercially available module. The new AC controller offers better frequency control for more flexible operation that is less affected by the discharge of the battery. This maximizes the performance of the battery for longer periods of time. This is a DC motor used on a conventional forklift. And the other is Toyota's newly developed AC motor. It does not have a commutator nor brushes and features a simple, compact design. Making the AC motor and drive unit more compact and integrating them together achieved an overall smaller size, enabling the battery to be positioned under the floorboards of the operator compartment. This breaks all the established concepts in forklift design, as well as achieves greater operator comfort and a lower center of gravity. Consumable motor parts will never have to be replaced on an AC motor, so maintenance costs will be dramatically reduced. Toyota's exclusive AC technology has opened a whole new world for electric-powered forklifts. You probably understand that a motor's purpose is to turn electrical energy into mechanical energy. In the early 19th century, English physicist Michael Faraday was able to build the first electric motor when he discovered that electricity could be made by moving a magnet inside a wire coil. His landmark discovery is known as the electromagnetic induction effect. An electric motor uses magnetism and electric current to work. For years, we have used DC motors in our electric lift truck models. With the introduction of the 7 series electric lift trucks, we now have a brushless alternating direct current drive motor, which should not be confused with alternating current motors used in industrial or household applications. Before we talk specifically about the current AC drive motor system, let's take a few minutes to review DC motor operation. This may help you better understand the benefits inherent with the AC system. The DC drive motor circuit is a series circuit made up of the following components. A battery, motor, CPU or computer, and transistor driver board. Within the transistor driver board is a circuit that controls the amount of current and voltage applied to the motor. The transistors used in this circuit are called SITs or static inductive transistors. There are actually three SITs connected in parallel in this circuit. The SIT transistor works in the same way a relay does. It has three terminals, gate, drain, and source. In a relay, there is a coil circuit that creates a magnetic field to draw the contacts closed. In the SIT transistor, the same circuits exist. The circuit created between the gate and source is the coil circuit. When voltage is applied to this circuit, the drain to the source circuit is closed and current flows through the transistor. This circuit is referred to as a chopper circuit because the transistor is turned on and off, chopping the current flow. You may know this circuit by its other name, 
pulse width modulation, or PWM. The frequency at which the circuit is turned on and off stays the same, but the length of time the circuit or transistor is turned on within one cycle is increased or decreased to increase or decrease the amount of current applied to the motor. This facilitates the power requirements necessary to operate the forklift. The longer the transistor is on, the more current flows through the motor. The motor can then produce more torque and operate at higher speeds. The longer the transistor is off, then current flow through the motor is low and torque and speed are reduced. The 5 FBCU four-wheel electric lift truck is designed for high-speed travel over long distances. It also uses the transistor-controlled chopper circuit as we discussed earlier. Using the fundamental drive motor circuit that we just built, let's lay out the 5 FBCU electric drive motor circuit. There are three different modes of operation or speeds to allow this model to be used over a wide range of operating conditions. The first mode is a transistor-controlled chopper circuit, which is shown here. The second mode is known as bypass, or motor short. A contactor is placed in parallel to the SIT transistor. This allows for maximum current flow through the motor when the contactor closes. The third mode is called field weakening. When the magnetic field strengths of the armature and field coil become very strong, a resistance is created that will not allow the armature to spin at maximum speed. So the magnetic field in the field coil must be reduced. A contactor and resistor are placed in parallel to the field winding. When the contactor closes, the magnetic field in the field coil is reduced or weakened, allowing the armature to spin at maximum speed. The 5 FBCU four-wheel electric lift truck has some advantages, such as long distance hauling and exceptional performance over a wide range of working conditions. Its prime disadvantage is that mechanical contactors and brushes are used. These components do wear and require frequent service to maintain top performance. Heat is also a concern with this system. As mechanical components wear down, they can create resistance in the circuit, which in turn creates heat and overall performance is affected. The 5FBE three-wheel electric lift truck has only one method of drive motor control, meaning one speed or one mode of operation. This is because it only has the transistor-controlled chopper circuit. Using the previous electrical schematic, let's build a three-wheel electric drive motor circuit. We have a battery, two drive motors, four contactors for forward and reverse, computer, and the transistor driver board. The transistor driver board contains the same chopper circuit as used in the 5FBCU drive motor circuit. The 5FBE uses mechanical contactors in order to change direction. The contactors are located on each end of the armature and control the direction of current flow through the armature to change armature polarity. By changing the polarity, the forklift can change directions. Clearly, this is an advantage because transistors are used to control the drive motor operation. But just as with the mechanical parts in the 5FBCU, the contactors and brushes require additional service. The order pickers and reach trucks use control units called traction power amplifiers to control the drive motor operation. This eliminates the need for contactors, but still requires the motor to have brushes. Let's build a simple class two drive motor circuit. We'll modify the basic drive motor circuit that we first constructed. The circuit will now have a traction power amplifier in place of the transistor driver board. The armature and field coil circuits will be connected to the amplifier separately, creating two parallel circuits. This is where the term separately excited motor comes from. This eliminates the need for contactors to increase speed and change direction. In our drive motor circuit, this is shown by the transistors that are highlighted. To increase speed, the two transistors highlighted will increase the amount of time they are on. As in the 5 FBCU, when magnetic fields in the armature and field coil get stronger, the armature cannot rotate at maximum speed. 
The strength of the magnetic field in the field coil is weakened by reducing the on time of the field coil transistor and increased slightly in the armature. By doing this, the armature is able to rotate at maximum speed. The four transistors highlighted control the direction the truck will travel. When the forward direction is selected, these two transistors turn on and the other two are off. When reverse is selected, the opposite happens. The two transistors that were off in the forward direction now turn on and the other two transistors turn off to change the polarity of the field coil by reversing the direction the current flows through the field coil. As an example, we're showing the initial takeoff of the order picker. When the magnetic fields are very strong in the armature and field coil, this will give us high torque for taking off from a stop or accelerating. Moderate operating speeds where the magnetic field strength will remain constant in the armature and field coil. And high speed when the magnetic field is weakened or reduced in the field coil to allow the armature to rotate at the maximum allowed speed. Torque is low, but since the truck is moving at speed, a high amount of torque is not required. These examples apply to all Toyota electric powered trucks. The advantage is the elimination of contactors, but you still need motor brushes. Now that we have an understanding of the DC drive motor system, Let's examine the AC drive motor system used in the 7 series electric lift trucks. Some of the same technology we have discussed will be used in the AC drive motor system, such as the transistor chopper circuit used to control the voltage and current applied to the three field coils. Unlike conventional DC motors of equal output, an AC induction motor is smaller in overall size. That's because it doesn't require brushes or a commutator area on what we now call the rotor. This allows the rotor to be larger in size. Additional field coils can be added and they can also be increased in size, which increases power and performance. Reliability increases over DC motors because there are fewer wear components, such as brushes or contactors that would need to be routinely replaced. These features reduce costly repairs and downtime that can affect productivity. Now that we have provided you with that overview, let's get more specific about the AC drive motor system. Let's start by building the drive motor circuit. We have the battery now connected to a group of six MOSFET transistors, and these transistors are connected to the three field coils in the motor. The armature that we had in the DC motor is now replaced with the rotor. This circuit looks more complicated than the DC motor circuit, but in reality it is easy to maintain and easy to understand. As we mentioned, like a DC model, this system still uses a chopper control circuit to control the current flow through the field coils but we need to add one more control to this drive motor circuit to allow the magnetic field to move from field coil to field coil. This is necessary so that the rotor will be pulled along with the magnetic field and will rotate in the same direction. The best way we can show how this works is by using what is called a Rago's wheel. A Rago's wheel easily illustrates how the AC motor works. If you rotate a magnet by hand on top of a copper disc, the disc rotates with the magnet, but the rotation is slower than the magnet. Because copper is non-magnetic, the magnetism created is not the only principle causing the movement. What happens is that relative movement occurs between the magnetic lines of force created by the magnet and the copper disc, and current flow occurs because of the magnetic field movement the disc has force exerted on it to rotate in the same direction of the magnet by the current and the magnetic lines of force of the magnet. Instead of a copper disc, the new AC motor has a rotor consisting of a stack of thin cutout metal sheets shaped to form an electromagnetic core. Aluminum conductor bars go through grooves in the core and rings on each end of the core connecting the bar ends. Because the bars and end rings make up a structure that look like a round cage, it's appropriately called a squirrel cage rotor. In a Rago's wheel, 
the magnets rotate, causing the copper disc to move. In the actual motor, three field coils will replace the magnets, but they are mounted in the motor case and do not move or rotate around the rotor. Instead, magnetic fields are created that rotate through the stationary field coils electronically. This action then produces a force or torque that turns the rotor. Using a simple three-phase induction motor, let's explain this function further. As the direct current cycles back and forth through the field coils, the magnetic flux passes through the rotor, creating the magnetic field to move the rotor in the same direction. In this example, the magnetic field is rotating through the three field coils. The individual phase coils are equally spaced around the rotor. This places the coils 120 degrees apart. In the actual AC drive motor, each field coil is broken down into four windings, and each of the four windings are broken down into two additional windings, bringing the total number of field windings to 24. This improves torque and overall performance and reduces heat during operation. We're now at a point where we can explain how this system produces alternating current from direct current. To better understand that concept, we'll look at how the drive motor circuit, in a word, manufactures alternating current in the drive motor. The three phases are tied together in a delta-connected field coil assembly. The MOSFET, or metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor, is the main element of the controller circuit. The transistor has three terminals, similar to the SIT transistor we discussed earlier. The three terminals are the drain, the gate, and the source. When a positive voltage is applied to the gate, the MOSFET is switched on and allows current flow from the drain to the source. When the voltage applied to the gate is turned off, the MOSFET is switched off, and this opens the circuit from the drain to the source. There are two MOSFET transistors connected in series that make up an arm configuration. The MOSFETs used in the controller circuit of 7 series models are compact and prevent harmful voltage surges. In the arm circuit, the positive and negative transistors turn on and off alternately. In the AC drive motor circuit, there are three arms connected to the three field coils controlling the motor operation. In order to manufacture the alternating current, the MOSFET transistors continuously cycle on and off in groups of three. The direct current flow is cycled back and forth, and this causes the field coils to change polarity, as we see here. To increase power, or torque, the controller increases the transistor on time within the chopper cycle. To increase speed, the controller does not allow the MOSFET transistors to switch on and off as often which will cause the magnetic field to rotate through the field coils faster. To change direction, the CPU or computer will change the switching sequence of the MOSFET transistors to make the rotating magnetic fields move the opposite direction in the field coils. As you see here, when the forward direction is selected, the CPU turns the transistors on in the following manner. When reverse is selected, the CPU will reverse the transistor switching sequence, causing the magnetic fields to move the opposite direction in the field coils. You should now have a better understanding of how the AC motor system operates and why the new 7 Series electric lift trucks are so highly regarded. By using this system, speed and acceleration can be achieved more efficiently. The components found in AC-powered lift trucks are all engineered and manufactured by Toyota. This means you can always count on the dedication of Toyota research and development to manufacture high-quality products for today's marketplace. On a technical level, this drive motor system is not only highly efficient and provides improved battery energy conservation, but the welcome reduction of mechanical moving parts translates to fewer and less expensive maintenance costs, making any material handling location much more productive.